June will mark the first European elections after the pandemic, the breakout of war in European territory and the energy crisis. Challenges that emerged alongside existing ones like the climate crisis. To discuss what is at stake at the upcoming polls, we talked to the Prime Minister of Greece, Mr. Kyriakos Mitsotakis. Prime Minister, thank you for having us. Thank you. So the European elections are less than three months away. What are the biggest challenges for Europe, in your opinion? And what are the stakes for this election? I think these are particularly important elections uh, for Europe as a whole, uh, given the broader economic and uh, geopolitical context. Uh, they're taking place uh, in a very uh, turbulent period uh, with a war raging um, uh, on our eastern uh, flank uh, with a substantial um, a humanitarian crisis uh, uh, unraveling uh, in Gaza uh, as uh, Europe uh, is exiting from a very, very difficult uh, five years. I think it is also an opportunity for us to take stock of what we have achieved uh, during uh, the last uh, European electoral uh, cycle uh, and to highlight uh, the significant successes uh, of the European Union uh, through the cooperation of all the institutions We've been able to defend ourselves successfully against COVID. Uh, we set up the next generation EU, which for countries such as Greece has a particular importance in terms of helping us boost our growth and also facilitate the green and the digital transition. We've remained against all odds um, or against uh, the predictions of some of our enemies uh, united uh, when it comes to uh, Ukraine. Uh, and now we need to set our sights on the next um, uh, cycle. Uh, and make sure that we are you know, fit for purpose uh, to address uh, the new upcoming challenges. How concerned are you with uh, louder and louder voices that are against Europe, anti-European voices? I think there will always be uh, voices that uh, challenge the successes of Europe. And indeed, uh, uh, some of the, I would say, the complaints uh, may, be, may be justified. But at the end of the day, uh, if one looks at the overall picture, uh, I remain firmly committed that the future of the European uh, Union uh, is bright and that Europe uh, has been able to deliver um, for its citizens. And that is why it is important for us to make the case uh, regarding what we have achieved, but also what we need to achieve going forward. Because as you look at the next uh, electoral cycle and the big issues that we have ahead of us, uh, the ones that I would personally highlight are three. First of all, uh, the need to turn strategic uh, autonomy from a slogan into a, a real um, and effective policy. Look at defense, for example. We not only need to spend more on defense, but we need to coordinate our uh, defense spending. The second challenge has to do with overall European competitiveness, how we can ensure that Europe remains competitive vis-a-vis uh, -vis China, uh, the US, and the Global South. This will mean uh, better jobs and better paying jobs for uh, European uh, citizens. Uh, the third challenge is, is more specific and more sectoral and has to do with agriculture and our farmers. At a time when food security is very high up uh, our agenda, we need to understand that some of the steps that we took uh, over the past five years regarding the green transition have put too much pressure that maybe we even anticipated uh, on uh, our uh, farmers and that we need to make sure that the green transition uh, is uh, executed at a speed that uh, does not... Uh, uh, significantly impact uh, the income of, uh, of our farmers. Would you say that maybe sometimes the biggest enemy of the EU is the EU itself? Look, there are 27 of us, and I'm talking about the European Council, uh, that gather numerous times a year in a room and we all need to agree by unanimity. This is a process that inevitably has to take time and which also involves compromises uh, and occasionally uh, necessitates taking a step back in order to achieve, you know, the common uh, European good. That is the nature of the Euro European Union. At the same time, as we are contemplating um, um, uh, the European enlargement, we also need uh, to look at uh, ways of making our decision making uh, more effective. Uh, that is also going to be a complicated exercise because any change will again require uh, unanimity uh, and uh, the agreement of all member states. Uh, uh, one needs to recognize that what we have achieved in Europe uh, is unique in the history of the world. We have voluntarily uh, given powers to a supranational uh, entity 
uh, and uh, we need to make this proper balance between decision making at the European and at the national level. Uh, you know, work um, every day. But uh, again, this is uh, maybe in quotes the price that we have uh, to pay uh, in order for us to also reap the benefits of participating uh, in the European Union. You mentioned something about Europe's uh, defense autonomy as a challenge uh, ahead. Would you also say that it should be the top priority perhaps of the next uh, Commission and Parliament? Defense is uh, existential, as we realized after the war in Ukraine. Uh, and maybe some countries believed that uh, the peace dividend uh, that uh, occurred uh, after the collapse of uh, the Berlin War and the fall of the Soviet Union would last forever. But uh, that has proven to be a fallacy. We were never in that position because we always spend a significant amount uh, on defense because of a particular uh, regional uh, geopolitical uh, challenges, but now we understand that we all need to step up to the plate and spend more, but also spend smarter, be more coordinated, uh, streamline our defense uh, procurement, uh, have maybe more European champions that can offer advanced defense solutions uh, uh, at a more uh, at a more competitive um, level than uh, is, is currently the case. Prime Minister, previously we have seen some uh, EU member states, and uh, Greece is not among them, but they struggle to convince their citizens to go and participate in the European elections. Why would you say is it important for people to go out and vote? Because what happens uh, in Brussels and because uh, who represents us at the European Parliament matters, because the decisions that uh, are taken in Brussels and in, in Strasbourg are very important for our everyday lives and we need to send qualified um, uh, people um, uh, to the European Parliament because at the end of the day the European elections are uh, about the European Parliament in order to uh, ensure uh, that uh, the Parliament will be comprised uh, of representative European citizens and will breach this gap between uh, decision making uh, in Brussels and what the European people uh, really want. So it, it is, uh, the European Parliament is the most democratic of, of all our institutions. And that is why participating in the European elections is important. Uh, we, have, we are a staunch pro-European party, so you wouldn't expect me to say uh, anything else. And of course, we're doing our best to mobilize people and to ensure that what traditionally is a low turnout uh, election uh, um, is uh, going to maybe defy the trend and uh, have increased participation. Thank you very much for this Thank talk. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much.